The Book Thief is one of the publishing industry's international success stories, selling more than 8 million copies since it was published seven years ago. It's been translated into more than 40 languages, and this week a major Hollywood film of the book, starring Geoffrey Rush, will open in Australia. You may not, may not realise that the author of this huge hit is an Australian, Marcus Zusak. Jacqueline Hole produced this story. Listen, where have you been? I said to meet me at the church. Let's go now. <coughs> Tell me, what is the matter with you? What the hell is this? You stole it. Sorry, Papa. To me, it reads like poetry. You know, every sentence, you know, you can go back to a Marcus Zusak sentence and, and luxuriate in it. The USA Today said that uh, The Book Thief was poised to become a classic in the league of A Diary of Anne Frank. A lot of people don't know that Marcus Zusak is Australian. Uh, a lot of people assume because of his um, name and because of the subject matter and location that, that he must be European, he couldn't be Australian. It's about a girl growing up in Nazi Germany and, uh, and that was a place where you had Hitler destroying people with words and in a sense she's stealing the words back by taking these books and reading with the young Jewish man she's hiding in her basement. Tell me, where do you get these words? It's a secret. And who would I tell? Can you do me a favour? Can you describe the day for me? What's it like outside? She's writing her own story with those words and hopefully it's a beautiful story written amongst that really awful, destructive world. And, and, uh, and I guess to me, that's exactly, that's what I feel the book is about. I grew up in Sydney and uh, my mum and dad are German and Austrian and they came to Australia with not very much at all and, but they brought their stories with them. So I grew up hearing about cities that were on fire uh, or the ground was covered in ice and the sky was on fire after they came out of the bomb shelters. And so I started to think, I've got these pockets of stories that I don't necessarily see in the documentaries I've seen and in footage I've seen. And I thought, oh, I just want to start with these stories. He is a different type of writer to the one that has normally been celebrated in Australia. Marcus is, is speaking from the heart and he's almost writing, it's, it's not a fairy tale and it, it's not quite a fable, but it's, it's at that level of poetic depth that uh, communicates on all levels, not just an intellectual one and not just a heart one. And, and I loved it. I loved the, uh, the idea that death was the narrator of this particular story. I kind of like the idea of death having a stra an Australian accent. <laughs> so, um, so I just, you know, that's what people say to me. How did, it, how did death sound in your own head? And I say, oh, it's Australian, clearly, you know. So my version of death is often quite casual as well, apart from the vulnerable sensibility that I also tried to use as well. I remember Anne McFarlane, our children's publisher, was sitting there one day and Marcus arrived with a bunch of manuscript pages and he shyly went into her office and said, look, I've written, I've written this book, it's a bit different, you know, let me know what you think. And I remember Anna walking into my office sort of quite shell-shocked after she'd finished The Book Thief. I think she read it in one sitting and she said, Kate, I can't actually quite describe what Marcus has just delivered, it's, but we've got a masterpiece on our hands. We got a call um, from Good Morning America to say that Charlie Gibson, the sort of legendary anchor of Good Morning America, which is the um, most watched morning television show in America, um, wanted to interview Marcus. This book might just be great. It is called The Book Thief, and I've had a number of friends read it since, and they all agree. 
The day after the Good Morning America interview, the book thief hit number one on Amazon, which, as you can imagine, with all the titles out there, is a very, very rare feat. So suddenly we had a hit on our hands. And I was in New York and I remember that night and all these great things had happened on the same day and it must have been 2.30 in the morning and I rang home and I called and then I called my mum and dad as well. And it was probably the first time in 10 years that I told my mum and dad that, that I loved him. And if the book could give me that, you know, that's, that's the greatest gift, you know, that I could ever imagine. And what makes you think that you are good enough for my daughter? People said to me, geez, you must be worried about the film. And then you hear that Jeffrey Rush and Emily Watson are going to be in it. You think, I think it's going to be OK. Day to day, I mean, I just get up really early and walk my two dogs. I just make sure I write at the same time every day and that my room is ready when I get there. And because I don't want to, I, I don't need any more reasons to procrastinate than I already have. And then kids come, the kids come home, and and uh, and so, and I, I like the idea that there's a little bit of chaos as well. It's it's nice because I think that's how you, how do you get stories in your life if you don't have that little bit of chaos. I think for many years now he's struggled with how to write his next book uh, to make it just as good as the book thief, if not better. But I think he now realises he's, he's just got to follow his own star and trust that if he does that, he will delight us all or outrage us all. Yeah, well, the new book's been a bit of a challenge and uh, that's probably an understatement. I've been working on it for a good six or seven years. And, uh, but it's about a boy who's building a bridge and his name's Clay and, and so the, title's, the title is Bridge of Clay. And he's, he's not only building a bridge though, he's sort of building his life into it, so it's made of him. Here's the new cover, that's going to be the permanent mm -hmm. one. Marcus is a very ambitious writer. He always wants to do better, but he's going to, he wants to write a better book each time. And how do you write a better book to the book thief? I look back now and I remember having to write an introduction for one of the new editions and if I was to, to say some piece of advice to myself at that time, you know, it would be, you know, you can't really change anything now, but you're a mess finishing this, but you're happy. And so you, you, that's how you should be. And that's, that's the perfect way to finish a book, I think.